So we're here to solve this slicey puzzle I wrote called Mini Hexes. The theme is tied to these center shapes. There were five of these I put uh, immediately into the grid, as well as these two big border regions. There's one on the bottom and one on the top that's just a one cell wide region goes all around. But that was the star of this puzzle. And in part, I like these seven cell mini hexes because they're actually a limited shape that have only two tetrahexes that fit into it. If I don't take this center cell, I have a whole set of ways I can form Cs. Um, but a C tetrahex is the only uh, thing that we can put in that space. If I do take the center cell, and here I'm actually going to turn on uh, edge helper uh, in my tab menu. And I'm going to do that because I now effectively have a case where I can't uh, take two cells that come together in any of these spaces. And that means if I shade this cell, I instantly unshade the ones around it, and I get to the fact that I have a Y. And anything that takes this center cell is going to have one of the two Y shapes possible for it. So one thing to, to note eventually in the solve, maybe not the very start of the solve, is, is that uh, pattern of shaded cells, which gives a C's or Y's in the mini hex shapes. My guess though is most solvers started from these smaller regions of top, like this region with six cells always has to shade these middle two. This region over here of seven cells always has to shade this, and you'll actually see you can't take both of these cells, and then marking that in with this X, we have to come in and take uh, this additional cell. This six cell region always has to take at least these middle two, but we can't take both of these, so it actually has to take at least these three. And if you track this diligently, you'll see we've actually marked a set of cells now we can't reach to be a full shading. We also are going to get a case where we have the start of now a six cell region left behind down below, which needs to take these middle ones. Uh, that now actually means that this shape here will always be a C. And notice if I took this cell and eliminated this, I put a C right next to it. So seeing a kind of chaining deduction from this cell, that's bad. I have to make the C to the left. I now can come back and even see if I shade this cell, I'm putting another C into the grid, so this is no good, so this has to take one more cell here. And that now may chain you into the first time you really think about these mini hexes, but I've got five cells to take, and I can't take uh, more than two of these uh, three in any vertex, and so again, the, the force shape has to be a C. Um, in here, I can only take two of these three around this vertex, so I have to take these other two. And in doing that, I now have some limitations. I can only take one of these, so I always take this cell. I'm um, just seeing if there are some other deductions like that we can mark in. This region at the bottom now has uh, six cells, and we'll always have to take these middle two. And it can only take one of these ones down below. I can actually take neither of those. But a thing to note is that if I actually take this cell here, I eliminate both of these, which now makes this region unfillable. So this is a forced S shape up above. Um, I formed this shape, which has to be filled by a C. And in forming this, I have to take two from this group of three and these remaining two. That always takes this cell. And if I took this bottom one, I'd have a C next to a C. So I said this is an L, marks these off. Put in another C shape here then is quick forcing. Um, here, I, I can't sort of take more than one along these edges. And in doing that, we'll see we actually have some patterns I can't shade in if I fully use them. Now I'm going to come up to this mini hex and where we had options that used C's before. Here note that if, if I don't take the center cell, a C is going to have an issue either here. Um, let me sort of get the marking I want to have. It's going to have an issue either here or here with going around and touching a C. So we always have to take the center cell. We can take one of these on the left and right, always have to take the top. That puts in this exact Y shape. It completes this L shape up top. That now limits this region. It now actually has just five cells, so it always has to take these that reach out to it. It can only take one of these two, so it takes this one, always takes this one. Puts in a Y shape. These get marked off. I finish this L up top. Um, in this space, I can only take one of these two cells, so I can't take this one that's further out. And as I'm actually thinking through this space, um, I have five cells of space. I always have to take these middle cells here, and I actually always have to take a third cell because I can't take both of these. This would form another C shape if I took that. So instead of an L, that now is going to mark some more impossibilities off this top border. And actually, no tetrax can go on this upper left side, so the tetrax has to be in the upper right. There are six cells left for it, so it has to take these middle two. That marks off these possibilities. 
forces this region to take an L. That marks out these possibilities, puts in an I up top. We've got another space now where we've got uh, just five to fill and can't take the center to make that work, so it has to be a C shape. Marking off these unknown cells, we've got five in this region. This will have to be a Y because it can't be a C, and so this is the valid Y. We've got an impossible edge there, um, otherwise most are marked. Down in the space, we've got a cell we always have to take like this one. I'm seeing if we know any more than that. I think that's at least the, the right kind of starting point. This region with seven cells left in it always has to take this cell, but because we can't take just these ones up top where these edges come in, I always have to take this cell so I can mark these off. Uh, this now gives us, I think with this cell eliminated, some key constraints around this three by two group. And one of that is that we always have to take this cell. If I don't take this cell, then I'm forced to put in a U shape, sorry, an O shape, which would have too much that collides. That now marks this edge off. So I have an either or, an either or, but we're gonna have to come over all the way to these far right cells. And the possibly the thing to note is the shapes that we can't make when doing that, uh, that would potentially eliminate stuff in the grid. We also have a case where we just by putting in the cell eliminated down from below and we have an either or here. So we have one, three, um, and now a fourth cell that puts a, an X here. And so I can't reach to this cell without always taking this cell. So I know this cell for sure that marks this as unusable. This now has to extend at least one more down. In doing that, it now doesn't have enough room before it reaches these cells that are impossible. So this puts in an L shape here that L shape forces this Y, this L touches a shape that's gonna to have to dodge it, so it's gonna be a uh, likely S. Uh, this now gives us only a couple options for what remains here, and we should see that a lot of these are gonna form a C shape. For instance, I take this L, I take this L, and I form a C, so that's no good. That now leaves behind this option, which does form this C, but it touches an S, an S, and a Y. Those all look okay. This now has a C or an L choice, and the C would touch another C. So this is a completion of the puzzle. So hopefully you got a sense of both the force geometry in the grid, the C Y limitations in the center was some of the key logical theme I was working on. And then maybe if you play with the kinds of notations, certainly on paper I use this where I mark X's along edges once I know only one of two cells can be remained as shaded. You'll see there are some different constraints that work their way out in the grid, particularly the, the limit of cells on the right side, and then a region like this one, as you mark several of these off of X's that force the eventual shapes. So hopefully not too tricky a puzzle, and hopefully this video gave you a sense of how to solve this list variation for the future. We'll see you again soon.